Chapter 24 Lainey stared in awe at the modeling agency. It wasn't quite as large as Madame Bonovich's had been, but it was close. Glass windows granted an expansive view of downtown, and rich colors filled the office. Welcome, Lainey. I'm Madeline Perry. I'm so glad you could make it. The outstretched hand was slender, which fit the woman in front of her. Though not short, Madeline was twiggy thin, and her severe blonde haircut made her appear even thinner. Dark liner accentuated her gray eyes that looked like a storm. Calm now, but Lainey wondered what they transformed into if Madeline were angry. Thank you. Me too. I heard you ended up becoming a contestant on Peter's show. I'm sorry I don't watch it, but some of my girls have auditioned for it before. As Madeline sauntered toward a massive desk, Lainey wondered how her slack stayed on. The woman appeared to have no hip bones to keep them up. I did, and I ended up with the cowboy, Tyler. Oh, a cowboy. How quaint. I don't suppose you kiss and tell, though. Her eyes raked over Lainey as if appraising her. Lainey felt her face flush. She didn't know if the women were asking for details or hinting at something else. Neither thought made her comfortable. I don't, but the wedding is in a few weeks and the studio is filming it. If you're interested, you could tune in. Madeline's playful banter disappeared. Are you planning a long honeymoon? I... I don't know. We haven't really discussed it. Planning the wedding has been hectic enough. Lainey couldn't believe the honeymoon hadn't come up until now. Had she just assumed the wedding planner was handling it? The reason I ask, Madeline said with a tight smile, is because I need someone reliable. This job requires a lot of hours, and I can't have someone who's going to be gone for an excessive amount of time. Oh, I'm sure it wouldn't be excessive. A week? Maybe two? Two would be too long, but if you can keep it out a week, we can continue the interview. Warning bells sounded in Lainey's head. Madeline hadn't seemed like Madame Bonovich over the phone, or when Lainey had first entered the office, but she was glimpsing similar traits now. Still, this was her dream job, wasn't it? I'm sure we could manage a week. Why had she said that? It was like she couldn't help herself. Very good. Then let me introduce you to Natalie. Natalie? Yes, my lead makeup artist. You didn't think I was hiring you for lead, did you? Lainey's mouth opened, but she had no words. Oh, you did. <laughs> Madeline laughed. I'm sorry, Lainey. I'm looking for an assistant. No one hires a lead they haven't worked with. Not in this business. It doesn't matter how good your references are. Lainey knew then that she no longer wanted to be in this business. She enjoyed makeup, and she had thought it was what she wanted, but being here didn't hold the same appeal it once had. She missed her students and her friends. No, I'm the one who's sorry. I've wasted your time, though I didn't mean to. I'm afraid I've realized this isn't my life anymore. My life is back in Texas, with my cowboy. Tyler raked his hand across his chin. I thought I was past this, you know, this urge to drink, but Lainey leaving? He shook his head. I guess it hit me hard. Don't be so hard on yourself, Aaron said as he sat across from Tyler. It was sudden, but that doesn't mean she's going to take it. Nancy says she's a natural with the kids. People like that, they realize their true calling. It might take her a while, but I think she'll come around. And what if she doesn't? What if she ends up another Sierra or Deirdre or... Stop. You can't keep beating that dead horse. Yes, you've had crappy luck with women, but you're not your dad. I never said I was. No, but you've been acting like it. It's like you've been trying so hard to prove you won't be like him that you're ending up doing the same thing. Only difference is you're pushing the women away before you marry them instead of after. Tyler thought back over his relationships. Had he been pushing them away? Certainly not outright, but subconsciously? Maybe. Perhaps he wanted a family so badly that he had been putting pressure on the women he had dated unknowingly. I had no idea, he said, shaking his head. Look, man, we all have something, but you can't let your fear and insecurity of losing Lainey drive her away. Be supportive, and I promise you that she'll be back. You're right. Thank you, Aaron. Once again, you saved my bacon. Aaron clapped a hand on his shoulder. That's what friends are for, man. You get the urge to drink again, you call me, okay? Any time, day or night. Tyler nodded and shook Aaron's hand. Thank you. He wasn't sure he wanted to leave yet. The demons were louder when he was alone and thinking about Lainey, but he knew Aaron had things to do for Nancy. She was nearing month six of her pregnancy and not able to do everything she could before. He pulled the front door open and stopped short. Was he imagining things, or had Aaron actually wished her home? Lainey? Hi, Tyler. 
I went by your ranch first, but when you weren't there, I figured you might be here. An invisible vice squeezed his heart. If she was seeking him out this soon after her interview, was it to say goodbye for good? How did the job interview go? She twisted her mouth into an endearing smirk. Oh, it was good. His heart fell. But it's not the job for me. His eyes flew to her. Had he heard her correctly? You didn't take it? The corners of her mouth twitched before her breaking into a wide grin. Nope. I realized when I got there that I didn't want that life anymore. Everything I want is right here, with you. He didn't have words, but he didn't need them. In two steps, he covered the distance between them and pulled her into his arms. His lips pressed against hers, fear and love and relief pouring out as he tugged her closer. Her hands wound around his neck, and his slid down to her waist. Heat burned between them, and though he didn't want to, Tyler forced himself to end the kiss before he compromised their promise. Everything I want is right here, too, he whispered into her ear, and she laid her head on his chest.